and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today I'm in 1.0, and uh, I've made a Viper from Battlestar Galactica. If you're unfamiliar with Battlestar Galactica, it's a space drama show thing that uh, I think unfortunately is no longer on the air. It was it was on the air. There was a newer version that was in 2003 till some other year, like three or four years, I'm not sure, and then there was an older version. And this is kind of based on the Vipers from the newer version, but the Viper is like their uh, standard fighter. Also, it's using a fuel cell, which is awesome, by the way. I like how the fuel cells automatically manage themselves. I was kind of worried that they wouldn't. But, uh, yeah, it's got, um... So we've got, like, we've got three reaction wheels back here to give it plenty of maneuverability, because else this thing would not fly well at all, because it is not aerodynamic. Uh, we have a fuel cell, of course. We have, um, vernier thrusters all over it for maneuvering outside of the atmosphere. Of course, it has reaction wheels so strong that those really aren't needed, but they do give a little extra boost if I were to use them. So, and and they look cool, and I haven't placed them like 100% accurately for where they should be based on the Vipers, neither is the overall design really 100% accurate, but it is pretty nice. Unfortunately, um, the way this works, okay, see this right here? I was thinking, okay, the new air brake the air brake, you can use it as a pitch or yaw system. Like, you can put it on a thing, on a craft, and have it automatically, like, open on one's... Well, open wherever it is in order to use it for a maneuver. And I was hoping I could do the same thing with these, with these control flaps. Um, so I was going to have the yaw based on only one side opening, so you create drag on that side and that causes you to turn, right? Unfortunately, you can't do that. So this um, this uh, vertical stabilizer has an air brake, and it's a vertical stabilizer, and that's it. So unfortunately, that's not the best, but whatever. Um, also, I'm pretty sure this thing's SSTO capable, considering the fact of where I currently am and how I got here. I got here by flying straight up, and if you can fly this high going straight up, then I, and and I ha I still have a fairly good amount of fuel left. Um, I believe this thing could SSTO very easily, actually, which is awesome and somewhat surprising. Also, you might notice the uh, control surfaces. I don't have these activated, and that's simply because I don't like when control surfaces glitch through other parts when they're in use. And if I were to activate these, they'd go through the uh, rapier engines here. And um, have I turned the intakes back on? Let's see. Yeah, I turned the intakes back on in preparation for re-entry and then resuming normal flight. And actually, here's what I'm going to do. This thing is super maneuverable, so I know it can take it. I'm actually going to hit the atmosphere flat. I'm going to just land in the atmosphere like this, and that'll create more drag. And also, I'm going to try and pull up out of the atmosphere. Like, I'm going to try and pull up as quickly as I can, because I'm going to be picking up a lot of speed falling right now, and I don't want to burn up since re-entry heat's now a thing, I actually, uh, in one of my earlier test flights of this design, before I got this far with it, I uh, actually blew one of these up. Not entirely, I just blew up the intakes, but uh, um, I think the intakes and like one other part didn't survive, but um, yeah, you can, you can have stuff like that happening. I'm actually going to go ahead and deploy the air brakes right now, even though at this orientation it doesn't matter. We're, chances are we're going to get kicked into an orientation where it will matter, so... I'm just going to have them ready to go. Uh, fortunately, like I said, this thing is super maneuverable, so I can, um, whatchamacallit, I can maneuver all right. Uh, even, even if this thing tumbles completely out of control, I can get it back under control. That's the beauty of this design so far. And it is a work in progress. It does need more work, but I just wanted to uh, go ahead and show you this part that since I was in the middle of doing a, uh, a see how high I can go see how quickly it'll run out of fuel when I fire up the engines in uh, closed cycle mode and, you know, just see how that goes. All right, we're starting to hit the atmosphere. Whoa, whoa. We're starting to have some, whoa, controllability issues, which is why I turned on the uh, RCS. Yeah, it won't let me pitch up anymore. I could actually deploy the drogue chute, although this high up, um, when we're potentially going to get some re-entry. Yep, there we go. There's the re-entry heating. Okay, uh, let's try pulling up. Alright, gently, gently. We got a bit of re-entry heating, but it looks like that's all we're going to get. Looks like we're, uh, that was actually a, a very good re-entry, despite 
um, being horribly messed up. Let's go ahead and turn those off. Oh yes, that was helping us pull up actually. See? And uh, we'll go ahead and fire these up. Our electric charge is running out, unfortunately. Um, let's see, that fuel cell. Missing oxidizer. Ah, we've used up all the oxidizer in the fuel cell. So now we have no more um, reaction control. Oh, that also means, yeah, we don't have any RCS and we don't have any uh, uh, inline reaction wheels, which means that's, that's a very serious problem because this thing entirely relies on those in order to fly properly. So as you can see, we are pretty much just going to crash unless I activate the abort stage, which deploys this brogue, yeah, drogue chute, and then we have a main chute. The main chute is actually hidden behind the cockpit in here, and yes, that makes it slight, slightly glitchy because the parachute opens out out here, and I don't like that, but I think overall that's, that's okay because once it deploys, it goes kind of more appropriately. Well, not in this case. Uh, it it it's it looks a little bit better, but I'm not too worried about that. It's not that realistic, but eh, I I just don't care with that one. It, I think it's nice how it is. I guess we have this little winglet here because this thing um does not generate lift at all unless I have that there. Oh yeah, and it hits the ground kind of hard when you land that way. Ooh, <laughs> part of it imploded a bit. <laughs> That, uh, but you can see it is a s relatively safe landing. So yeah, that's the Viper I'm working on. I accidentally took a screenshot. So I'm back in the SPH, and I'm going to actually add some radioisotope thermoelectric generators on here. Just two of them right next to the fuel cell, so that even when we run out of everything else, we'll still have a tiny bit of power, and hopefully it'll be enough power to uh, fly. That's, that's the idea, anyhow, is that I can at least keep alive let's see I think that's a good position for them that looks nice it does glitch slightly with this but I'm not worried about that oops let me grab this I'm gonna try and put it back on in a sensible location ah uh, I don't like how it's slightly clipped but that's okay unfortunately I found out that if you try to use the um, offset and rotate tools on this it kind of glitches out so that kind of sucks but overall Things are going well. All right, let's. Uh, so here's here's how I launch this in its current state. Um, by the way, you might have noticed it does actually have that's a landing gear. Yeah, a single landing gear that is not like the Vipers in the show at all. That was just kind of me attempting to get something so that it can take off. It can actually take off from that. It can't land on it. Um, but the takeoff from that doesn't work very well. I'm actually gonna try and incorporate some vertical thrusters on the bottom here. Um, and landing gear like it would have in the actual show. But that's not something to worry about right now. Right now, I'm demonstrating how I take off from this platform, which is fire the thrusters at full throttle, wait for them to build up a bit of speed, or a bit of thrust, rather, then detach, oops, bump that slightly, and then quickly cut and raise it to just over one-third, which is what I typically use for, like, flight speed, and I'm going to go ahead and look at the electric charge usage, which, as you can see, it recovers pretty quickly now. When we're maneuvering, we do end up using the charge, but the fuel cell can compensate for that. In fact, I don't think we even need the fuel cell to compensate for that anymore, because all you have to do is let go of the controls for a moment. Never mind, we're still running the battery down, so it's a good idea to go ahead and turn that on. So we have a bit of an emergency reserve now. Like, worst case, we can just turn off everything for a minute and let the charge build back up and then be fine. So, yeah. Oh yes, let's go ahead and... I'm only gonna, uh, well actually I'm gonna throttle up to maximum right now. And I'm just gonna point it straight up. And then I'm gonna have to throttle down at some point here because this thing will burn itself up in the atmosphere trying to escape, which is, uh, pretty bad. Also, I'm not flying it optimal, optim, optimally. Op, optimal, that word. You know how sometimes a word just quits working for some reason? Yeah, we're going, we're getting pretty fast. You don't want to burn it. Didn't see I'm throttling down slightly. Oh, we're still heating up a little. 
but we're mostly doing okay. If I hit F3, I can see the launch camp was damaged by engine exhaust, but nothing's overheating. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and throttle back up. And this time I'm going to let the engines die before I switch. Oh, it automatically switched. I forgot about that. Um, crap. Oh, fuck. Eh, oh well. Because the one button is just to uh, toggles the intakes and the engines, that was a slight problem. Alright, so that time we should have gotten further into space. Let's see. Not much further, but a little further. And I'm going to go ahead and time warp, do this re-entry, and, um, and then I will stop for today. Thanks for watching. As always, going up, going down, see you in space.